don't know what's happening next. I scribe well, it's the sermon next. <laughs> so <laughs> did you want to hand over to me? I won't hand All over right. to myself. Yeah, yeah. Very well prepared this morning. So over to Gordon. <laughs> Hi guys, it's me, Gordon. Join me on a lovely sunny day. Check that sun out, it's up there somewhere. There it is. Uh, we're just going to be looking at the next part of our Ancient Ways series. And before we start delving into the specifics of each of the practices, um, just wanted really just to spend one more week thinking a little bit more foundational and wanted to explore the whole kind of philosophy, the principle of apprenticeship. Now, throughout the Bible, in the Old Testament, the New Testament, the theme of apprenticeship is just astounding. It runs all the way through from the Old Testament to the New Testament. I just mentioned a few, but you think of Moses and Joshua. And God actually speaks to Moses about calling Joshua to himself and investing authority in him and spending time with him to apprentice him. You think of Elijah and Elisha, very much an apprenticeship model. You think of King David and his son, King Solomon. There's a, an entrustment into the same way. The tribes of Israel each had different responsibilities. Each different tribe would apprentice the next generation through to carry on those distinct practices of the 12 tribes. And then we see Jesus when he calls the disciples to himself. There's this whole thing of entrustment, you know, follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. I'm going to teach you guys some things. We see that with the Apostle Paul when he's um, speaking to Timothy. I've entrusted things to you. You're to make sure they're put in place in all of the churches. And then when Paul is writing to churches to receive Timothy, there's this whole thing of like, receive him as you would receive me. He knows my ways. And so the whole thing of apprenticeship is absolutely crucial as we kind of contemplate and grapple with what it is to practice ancient ways. But let's go on a little talk, we'll have a little chat about it. If you missed the introduction to our Ancient Ways series, the whole idea behind it really is that we are responding to an invitation from God to down tools and to learn some practices that Jesus entrusted to his early disciples. Now, somewhere along the, the, the line of Christian tradition, churchmanship and all that sort of stuff, these practices aren't necessarily things that we entrust to one another right from the off. And so we're talking about things like prayer and fasting and pilgrimage and sacred meals and giving. And there's a few others beside. And all of these practices, they're kind of sacramental. These are practices that are actually form in us, like they strengthen our inner world. And so much like if you went to the gym, it keeps your body in good physical shape. Well, think of ancient ways as like a spiritual conditioning for your soul. Imagine your soul a little bit like a garden. Imagine this garden and imagine if the grass wasn't cut for years and imagine it wasn't tended to for years. Soon foxes would come in, the grass would be up above my head. You'd have refuse and plastic bags to be coming in and eventually this place would not be a place of beauty but actually it would be a place that wouldn't be very nice. And it's like that with our soul. When we practice these spiritual disciplines, these ancient ways, they form in us a sense of clarity, a sense of purpose, a sense of beauty, a bit like an, an artist's wall, kind of all the time that we spend in these practices with God through the power of the Holy Spirit, actually it does something to our inner world that makes it a little bit more like this place where I'm walking around at the moment. And so the theme of apprenticeship is, is vitally important and let me tell you why. So in my life i've had a few people that have really apprenticed me i'm just gonna give a few examples the first one was a great guy called ken he actually ended up being the person he was a bit of a spiritual father to me and he was the one that god brought into my life when i was right in my darkest darkest most depressive place i was suicidal without work and i got a job in a christian run car garage and this guy ken he ended up becoming a spiritual father to me and he saw something in me that I couldn't even see in myself. He was looking at me through the eyes of Jesus and he called me in a relationship with him. He gave me a, a job in his business and actually over some years he invested in me, he invited me along to Alpha um, and he sort of just spoke life into my soul. He invited me to get involved in his small group and they kind of began to apprentice me in different ways. And the thing that Ken really apprenticed me in above, any, above anything else was just worshipping God. Like the church that we were in, it was a little bit of a, it was charismatic, but with a seatbelt. If someone had their arms up in worship, that would be a remarkable day. But guaranteed every Sunday, Ken would be there praying in tongues. And one of the other ways that Ken taught me to worship was actually seeing Ken sadly as he died. 
10 had lung cancer um, that he got through the motor trade, some asbestos he got in his lungs in the 70s or 60s. And, um, you know, by the time I knew him in the late 2000, well, early 2000s, um, cancer just appeared in his lungs and ravaged his body. And, and Ken sadly went to meet the Lord a lot earlier than his family and I would have wanted him to. But actually, I, I, I had the privilege of going to share communion with Ken in some of his final days with his brothers in his room, in his bed, uh, like hospital, hospice room. And um, I saw a man ravaged by cancer, worshiping Jesus wholeheartedly, knowing that he was soon gonna see him face to face. And as I think of Ken, I think of worship, and I think of what Ken did in me in regards to my heart of worship, is I've in many ways imitated Ken, I've tried to. I've wanted to be like him. He was different than the others. There's another person that has apprenticed me, and that's Adam Vogt. Some of you will know Adam Vogt. Um, he's spoken at Hope Church City in Bourne. Adam Vogt is the lead elder at Cornerstone City Church in Medway. And uh, in 2008, I started working alongside or underneath Adam Vogt, really, because he, he called me into a relationship where I kind of left my work and I became like an intern. I was literally an apprentice. And for 10 years, just around about almost 10 years to the day, I was with Adam. We journeyed to different places together. I worked full time with him. We spent a lot more time together probably than we did with our own families. I saw how he prayed, I saw how he grieved, I saw how he celebrated, I saw how he read the Bible, I saw how he preached, I saw how he handled difficult pastoral situations. And in many ways, I didn't know it at the time, but looking back, I can see it so clearly, Adam was apprenticing me. I was in a close relationship with him and everything that he did, I kind of imitated. And that's what Paul says in the New Testament, follow me as I follow Christ. And so, the whole thing of apprenticeship, it's radically different. It's radically different and it's crucially important to what we're looking at with ancient ways. Let's take a seat and I'll explain it. So in Christian circles, one of the things that we often do is we love to teach. We love to teach one another. I think the whole thing of the church being, about, being built around a pastor teacher model is that takes the leading edge in many ways. And actually what we see with Jesus is he does teach people. As we read the New Testament, we see that he teaches people. Of course he does but he seems to call people into deep relationship with him, to live daily life with him. And then he teaches them kind of through the day-to-day -day situations of life. It's an apprenticeship model that Jesus uses. And we're in many ways to be no different. I think the whole thing with a classroom relationship where I might teach maybe on a Sunday, the ancient ways we could teach what, what is fasting? What does the Bible say fasting is? But how much better for me to say, why don't we enter into a thing where we actually practice fasting together and we talk about what we're learning and we maybe even draw into a relationship with someone who's ahead of the game on us, some, you know, kind of a, some way ahead of us and that we actually learn from them. What is it to fast? And they teach us. I think all Christians, yourself, myself included, myself as a season leader, perhaps, we're always learning. We're in lifelong learning from birth to death. We're always learning and I think the whole thing of apprenticeship is that we call ourselves into relationship with others so we say look could I follow you could I learn some things from you I love the way that you pray would you teach me to pray or I've seen the way that you fast a couple of times a week and it really challenges me because I don't know how to fast I've never really been shown or taught how to fast would you teach me for a season and then actually what I've learned from you I'm now going to share it with others so I'm going to call others like Paul did Follow me as I follow Christ. And I'm going to call some people to me and say, look, could I show you how to read the Bible? I'd love to do that. Would you like to grow in that? I think it'd be a real strength in your life. Let's do that together. Let's go on a journey. Let's apprentice one another. I'll speak into your life. You speak into mine. It's a relational thing. And so for us as a church here in Sittingbourne, but wherever you're from, you can take part as well. Over the coming weeks, as we begin to look at what the Bible does say about fasting and about pilgrimage and about giving and about the sacred meal and about lots of other things as well, actually what we're going to do is encourage and invite one another to participate in these rhythms. So at the moment we've got an early morning Bible reading thing that we do every Tuesday morning. It's a Bible study. We're going through the book of Ephesians just verse by verse. And in some ways, it's, it's my attempt to say to others, look, could I just show you how I read the Bible? It's that. And so people don't know it's that, but that's what we're doing. And I'd love to invite you. Would you join us in that? There's also going to be opportunity as we look at fasting, like in a couple of weeks time, we'll be looking at that to set some time aside, maybe on a Friday afternoon where we would intentionally fast and pray into specific things. I've been really stirred recently. I was in a, a no place left conference 
And uh, one of the things that they were talking about is some church movement that's uh, really concerned. I guess their leading edge is that they want to see people going into the harvest, reproducing healthy disciples that ultimately will reproduce healthy churches that are being planted out of the harvest. So not just moving Christians around from place to place to start a new church, which is kind of what we've done in Sittingbourne, to be fair, but actually going into the harvest. And one of the things that they've seen is as people have intentionally set time aside to pray and to fast, God has done something through their efforts in engaging with the world that sin, lost people find reconciliation with God. And that's what I'm really excited about. With ancient ways, we could approach them as something that we've got to do. And in some ways, of course, you've got to change your practices to become a bit more like Jesus, to be apprenticed by him. But actually what Jesus is doing all the time is calling us into deeper relationship with himself. And so I guess really that's what he's doing right now. He's spoken to me specifically through my sabbatical. Gordon, would you come and set some time aside? Because I want to teach you some ancient ways. And I'm sort of saying, guys, would you come with me? Because Jesus wants to teach us some ancient ways. And hopefully you're going to encourage one another. Would we set some time aside to learn some ancient ways? We're going to be apprenticed by Jesus in a new way of doing things. But it's an ancient way. It's just a hidden and a, a, and a forgotten way. It's a narrow path. It's a narrow gate. And Jesus is inviting us to become more like him as we go into that. And so there are a few questions really that I want to ask you that you might want to think through in the quietness of your own heart. I used the analogy earlier of this field being a little bit like the condition of our soul. Would you say that the garden of your soul is being well tended right now? Is it a pleasant place for people to stroll, smell the flowers, or actually, is it left untended? Is it getting wild? Is it overgrown? Is it left dormant and neglected? If it was left that way for another month, another year, maybe even another 10 years, what would the condition of that place be? What would the condition of your soul be? Now, hopefully you're making good steps towards Jesus and you're inviting the Holy Spirit to change it and transform you. But that's a massive question. And if we can answer that question, honestly and soberly like i've found this recent covid19 season really really challenging on some levels today i really surprised myself lost sight of myself a little bit got a little bit angry at home just feeling a little bit low and and so there's this reality that things can creep up on us i thought i was doing all right and then all of a sudden it's like, oh actually you know like internally there's some things that i'm still needing the holy spirit to help me work on and it's like that for all of us we need to look at ourselves with sober judgment but one of the indicators of how the condition of your soul is what the garden is like is going to be affected by your relationship with the gardener. And so the next question would be, if you were, say, sat with a marriage counsellor and you were talking about your marriage, but actually the marriage you're talking about is your relationship with God, how would you honestly describe it? Would you say that you're thriving, you're in great healthy communication, that you love spending time with one another and that it's going great and it's been the best it's ever been? Or, or would it be something else? Would you be saying, actually, we're not talking that much at the moment? Actually, we're just a bit distant. I'm just struggling to connect. You know, like in any healthy relationship, we have to really fight and contend for the good stuff. Left to our own devices, relationships kind of just get a bit sour, they get a bit dormant. They get a bit stagnant. We have to really contend and fight for good, healthy relationships. We need to prioritise them. We need to put their energy and their effort in. Even when we're tired, even when we're jaded, even when we're confused, we need to contend for that stuff. And so that would be my second question. So the first question is, how's the garden? Are you tending it? Are you looking after it? Because this next season's all about that. It's effectively coming up to the gardener and saying, Jesus, I want a great relationship with you. The apprenticeship model is all about relationship, isn't it? You come into someone's world and you learn, like Jesus did with the disciples, you learn how to be a fisher of men. Jesus fashions something in you through relationship with him. It's not academic and, and up here, it's all on a heart level down here. And so the first thing is, how is the garden? And the second thing is, how are you getting on with the gardener? And so really, I, nothing more profound than that this morning, other than asking you, if you would say either of those relationships right now, I'm, you, that you know, I'm so excited because actually this season is all about 
improvement and strength being added into that area. That's what I believe Jesus is inviting us into. Let's not get busy. Let's down tools, reconnect with him and actually just walk in the garden with him and learn how to tend the garden. It's all about the garden. It's all about pressing into Jesus and learning his ways. And they're not heavy ways. They're exciting. His burden is really light. And if you don't know Jesus, the great thing is, is he loves to tend every garden that he's in. And so if you would open up your heart to him, he would love to come in and bring beauty and clarity and make it a place that is just such a delight to be in and to be around. And so guys, love you lots. We're going to go back to ourselves at the house now. We're going to pray. Um, thank you so much for joining me in this place. Isn't it beautiful? Um, I'm hoping the weather holds out like this for a few more weeks until lockdown ends. Well, hopefully after lockdown ends, we can enjoy it even more then. But um, yeah, we'll catch you in a sec. So, how's the state of your garden? And um, what's your relationship like with the gardener? I've been doing a bit of gardening this week. Uh, I've had to attack loads of ivy. It's been a nightmare and it's taken hours and hours of hard work. So, we're inviting you into a relationship with Jesus, with God, and to make it show from your life, really. And, and that's going to take some hard work. Yeah. Are you ready for it? So, I think this, this is the invitation. As much as we're saying, like, would you come and engage with what we're doing? Actually, I think it's an invitation that Jesus mm. presents to all disciples is would you follow him a little bit closer? Um, and it's all about the relationship with him, with the gardener, using that analogy. And so I recognise, like I'd sort of shared, we've had a bit of a tricky weekend. It's not been the best. I think we all deal with isolation um, in, uh, well at times and then sometimes a bit more challenging. But the whole thing is, is being in accountable relationships, both with God and with one another where we can say you know what actually I need the gardener to like Natalie has in our back garden I'll try and share a picture at some point because it is a radical transformation um, but actually would we invite the gardener to really come in and do some deep work in our lives in our hearts in our souls and um, because ultimately it's going to leave us good like if we're left to our own devices and everything degrades uh, ultimately you imagine a garden that's like that it's not a nice place to invite people it's around like yeah, it's not a nice <laughs> place to invite people around for a barbecue um, or to spend time. You just would avoid it. Whereas actually you've got to put in the hard graft. And the great thing is we don't do it alone because mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit yeah. wants to make us more like Jesus. That's the whole purpose of his presence in our life is that we would know who we are in Jesus and become more like him till the day when we see him with the veil mm -hmm. lifted. And so we're just going to pray right now. You might want to sort of consecrate yourself to God and say, God, actually in this season, Wherever you're from, whether you be in Gillingham or whether you be in Spain or anywhere else, um, you might want to say, Holy Spirit, would you help me? I need a little bit of gardening work to go on. I want to be more like Jesus and I, I want to embrace some of these practices that I've not really embraced. I might have done a few of them, but actually I really want to do what Jesus did and, and practice what Jesus taught. Um, and so that's the invitation. We're going to give ourselves to that and we're hoping that you might feel the invitation to do that as well. Okay, so I'm going to pray. So if you feel like you want to connect more with God and you want to align your life a little bit more into God's life, then pray along with me at home. So God, we thank you that you are kind, that you are good and that you're a skilled gardener, that you know all the bits that need rooting out of our lives and you don't expect us to turn our lives upside down all in one go, but you tend to us carefully and... Um, I trust you to do that in my life and I pray that you will show us each the parts of our lives that we need to hand over to you again or even hand over to you for the first time. Help us to be open to you doing your business with us because we know that our lives will look better at the end of it. Amen. 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 Thank you love for praying that.